Hello and welcome everyone to this series of conversations that we're doing with youth change makers from countries across the Asia Pacific. This is ahead of the regional youth festival that is happening in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia later this month, hosted by Arrow. And with us today is uh, Arifin Norman, who works in Bangladesh with uh, young people, and he uses sport and football as a means to uh, help disadvantaged children uh, become uh, economically empowered as well as uh, for uh, you know to help them psychologically so welcome arifin and uh, please tell us a little bit about your project okay thank you uh, sumita uh, so my project uh, the name of my project is uh, football and food to fight the plight so uh, that's the title of my project so as it is uh, very clear from the project name i uh, you i planned to use football and food uh, for the economically and socially marginalized and underprivileged children uh, to become economically and psychologically more resilient. So right. uh, I'm working, yeah. No, no, please go ahead. Okay, so I am work. my uh, primary plan was to work in Dhaka. So the uh, children in the, in the slums of Mirpur are uh, uh, part of the Dhaka city. But uh, when I was planning to do that, I, I had to shift, uh, shift from Dhaka to Cox's Bazaar uh, for my new service. So I, uh, with, with permission from the Arrow team, I shifted my project uh, to this place as well. So uh, then I, I started my project in Tecna, uh, sub-district of Cox's Bazaar, Cox's Bazaar district. So I live uh, very near to the Bangladesh-Myanmar border, uh, right beside, uh, right on the bank of Naf River. So uh, that place is very, uh, you may say, quote unquote, famous, infamous for, uh, for uh, Yaba, a particular drug that is uh, transported from Myanmar to Bangladesh. So this is the gateway of Yaba to enter Bangladesh. And this is one of the most dangerous drugs that are being used by, the, by mostly the young people of, uh, of this country. So uh, the place I live, uh, I live in, so right, uh, right beside it, like, uh, 10 to 20 feet away. That's that's like the uh, like the gateway of Yaba. That uh, the way the way the Yaba gets into this country. So the the children near this place or around this place are uh, extremely vulnerable to these drugs. Uh, there are uh, incidents like the f family members, like the father or elder brother, they are uh, abusing uh, this drug, and also they are transporting the drug to the country. So it's extremely, uh, you know, uh, extremely vulnerable situation for the children. Great. So how exactly does the project uh, work? Okay. So uh, I basically, after, after joining uh, in this service here uh, in Technaf, I started recruiting the children from uh, from the nearby football grounds. Like I had, I was, I I was roaming around the football grounds for a couple of days. Then I identified uh, some of the children, and and uh, like um, to, in terms of scouting the children from this place, I used like the pre, uh, I uh, previous previous linkages like the uh, maybe the maid of my house and also some other linkages that can uh, find out the children from the slums and uh, the uh, you know the bordering regions. So. Uh, in this process, I started recruiting the children, and I came up with like ten to twelve. Uh, kids that can be uh, directly um, entitled with the project. And there are some other uh, children who are uh, below the age of 10. So uh, they are in the junior part of the project. So uh, for, for them, I, what I did, I uh, selected the, uh, the kids who, are, uh, who performs uh, better than, the, than others. And their, the selection criteria was like, as I said, they are economic status and uh, family status and also uh, their vulnerabilities. So uh, in that way, I selected them. And then I started, uh, started taking them to the, to the football ground and buy, buying them uh, football kits like the jerseys of their favorite team and uh, kits that are needed uh, to, to, uh, to take training with the local, um, uh, local football academies. So I purchased them with, with that. And also, and also I purchased footballs for them so that they can uh, play without 
without any um, tension of money. So that's how it worked. And yeah, and, and after each game, I, I supported them with food. Like they, uh, it was like a party. So every day uh, in the afternoon, they gathered for football, they enjoyed themselves. And I trained them, uh, trained them with skills and, <clears throat> and other uh, technical parts. And then after the game, they, they run to the, to the nearby shop and uh, select from the, shop, uh, from the shop what they want to eat. And Excellent. then they party while having food as well. Excellent. That's lovely. Great. Very beautiful to hear. So the project, uh, so tell me first, uh, you're a sportsman yourself. Are you also a football player? Uh, uh, no, I'm not a professional football player, but I used to play football uh, until the end of my graduation. Uh, uh, so when I joined my service, I had to discontinue uh, playing. And also I have, a, I have a son who is like um, almost two years old. So I have to, uh, I, I have a family commitment after office hours. So I, I cannot engage in playing football myself, but I manage time for them so that they can uh, play football. Absolutely. Uh, no, even, I meant not uh, as I a can. professional, but meaning you've been a player yourself. So you kind of know the yeah, yeah, yeah. football. I was, I, was, I was one of the players in uh, the uh, players of the main team of Brack University, uh, which is a university in, in the Dhaka city. So I used to play then. And uh, when I, I was uh, in my master's in Jahangir Nagar University, I used to play then as well. Excellent. So tell me, how does, uh, I mean, the project has been on the ground for about two years now. So, uh, I mean, firstly, where did the idea come from that, uh, you know, that football uh, can really help children? Yeah, so uh, uh, as, as I said that I played uh, football myself. So uh, I... I understand very clearly and I realize that uh, football is like a relief. You know, if you, if you uh, look at the uh, economically uh, poor countries uh, over the world, not, not only South Asia, like the teams like uh, Argentina, Brazil, and all the other uh, Latin American teams and um, the African teams, so, and also the most famous players as well, they come from very poor, very marginalized background. So the ones uh, who uh, play football in the streets and maybe uh, the ones who, who did not have money to buy football once, they are becoming the richest footballer uh, in the world later. So, and also I, uh, when I was, I was playing football uh, while in school, college or university, I realized that uh, after, after uh, taking the pressure of study and all the other works, football is like a relief. And the most unique part of football, which, uh, which, uh, which makes it unique other th uh, than the other sports, like it's very cheap. So uh, you, you, just, you just need a, ra need a ra round object. It, it, it could be uh, some objects that uh, other, than, other than football. So if you have a round object with you, you can play football with it. So uh, that's the point I realized that uh, football can be the option for the children here. Great. So, uh, so it's been about two years, right? That the project has been on the ground. Uh, I planned it to uh, uh, around two years ago, but since I had to shift my uh, location, so uh, like you can say, for example, one to one and a half years. Excellent. So, uh, how do you see the impact of the work that you're doing with the children that you're working? Uh, to be honest, the impact uh, is the potential impact is very lar large. So as I am uh, actively involved with this process, I can like see and I can dream of that the project is going somewhere, and the children also they are with me. They are in, in they are also a vital part of this project. Uh, but the problem is, one should be very actively involved and the entire day should be invested on them. So uh, there should be like uh, one or two persons who are always guiding them. So, to, uh, you know, 24 hours uh, guidance should be provided to them, but that's not uh, possible for me. Uh, and also for not, not them, because uh, many of them, like they are um, supporting their fathers or elder brothers while they are going to uh, catch fish in the river. Uh, so when, when their father um, bring fish from the river, they are going to sell it on the market. 
so uh, generally they sell it uh, on the market uh, in the afternoon so uh, that is the time where uh, when when i can i can take them to the ground so many of them sometimes uh, miss the games uh, so uh, e even if they are very interested to take part but uh, it is extremely difficult for them to uh, participate since it is more important to support their families economically so if i can support them uh, if i can ensure their economic support it is it, it will become very easy for them to participate without any extra ten right. tension excellent so if you can give me like maybe you know of the children that you worked with examples of one or two children who you think are doing really well and uh, if you can tell me a bit about them yeah so as i said in the uh, senior team i have 12 uh, 12 players so uh, one of uh, one of them uh, is uh, tamim who is uh, who who lives very near to my house so uh, currently he is the captain of my team so i will i would like to speak about him him as he uh, according uh, to me he is the most interested uh, among all so uh, once he was uh, he used to go to school but now he he doesn't uh, he ta he takes a lesson from a nearby madrasa so uh, he has relatively more available time than the others and uh, he's son of a street vendor who uh, who sells food fruit in the streets and um, and also um, people around my neighborhood they say that they're uh, there are also uh, people who sell drug in in his family so it is uh, extremely um, he he is in extreme vulnerable situation in terms of that so but his interest his encouragement uh, really motivates me to run the project and there are some other children like one is shahadat uh, who doesn't have either of his parents like his uh, father left left the family and currently live in another another uh, area in technaf and his mother left the family as well uh, she moved to india so shahadat doesn't have uh, his father or mother he lives with uh, sometimes with his uh, with his paternal relatives or sometimes in uh, with his maternal relatives so uh, but this this guy this uh, this kid um, has some unique aggression in him you know since uh, there was no uh, parent to guide him or um, uh, tell him what to do and what not to do so uh, it's very interesting to work with him like uh, when when he starts playing you see that aggression in him that is uh, something very uncontrollable so uh, it, it doesn't matter how many time you uh, tell him or advise him to uh, stop or not to hurt the team members or not to hurt the uh, opponent team members uh, he doesn't he doesn't listen at all but he plays very well you know so uh, these two guys are extremely interesting in my project and there are some other as well uh, if if i start telling about all them uh, it will take one or two hours you know right. so, so uh, how many it's very interesting i would say sorry about how many children in all about how many children in all Oh, uh, uh, there are twelve children in the senior team, and there are like um, six to eight children in the junior team. Excellent. So, so uh, about twenty children. I, I am yes, about twenty children. So I focus on the senior team basically. Uh, the junior team they they actually uh, play themselves. Um, like um, there are separate fields for for both for the teams. So I focus on the senior ones, and I. i i ha i give i gave a football to the junior team they play uh, uh, play as their wish and right. after the game they join us uh, while we take food lovely so um I, I just curious to know what kind of uh, you know response are you getting from the local community on your project the response i would say uh, is excellent i i receive amazing response from the community uh since it's uh, they, they 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 never experience something like that so especially from the parents like uh, the people you know this place is very new for me as well so uh, it is uh, like culturally it is very different from my previous places so it was uh, difficult for me to cope up with this place but when i started this project and when 
the parents uh, gradually when when i managed to uh, gain their trust so the approach of the people towards me has changed so like the uh, when whenever i am on the street i am going to the office or coming back home so when whenever the people uh, see me they greet me they uh, say hello to me they uh, ask uh, how am i how am i doing and also they are uh, uh, sending the, the foods uh, to my house like the uh, locally procured foods and also um, uh, in my house i have a, a women work in my house whose son is also in my project so the community is uh, being uh, very actively connected through this project i i, I don't I, i don't say that they were uh, they were not connected previously but now the connection is very visible and when you when you uh, visit my home you, when you uh, come to the residential area where i live in you will say uh, at least 5 to 10 children who are wearing the jersey of my project so they are always like wearing that jersey and moving moving around so you will see a a, a specific color whenever you enter this place so Lovely. that is actually amazing to me right so what about funding and how do you you know raise funds uh uh actually i had i had plans several plans of raising funds but uh you know uh, f- since i have to have i have to uh, attend office full time so it's very very difficult for me to look out for funds so uh, up up until now it's more more like self funded so firstly uh, there was fund from aero but uh, when that fund has finished i had to continue the project but at the same time i did not have the have enough time to look out for fund so uh, i have been uh, running this project self funded excellent great lovely so you you said going to office so what is day job for you where do you work and what do you do uh, i work for the british red cross uh, as a part of the international federation uh, of red cross and red crescent societies Uh, so i work uh, in a project of british red cross in technaf uh, which is in collaboration with the bangladesh red crescent society uh, so uh, um, in in three unions of technaf upazila uh, our intervention is going on so and my office timing is like from morning to the afternoon like the government office timing uh, so uh, that's where I work Excellent. currently. So if you can tell a bit more about uh, you know the support that you got from Arrow the mentoring in setting up this project. Uh like but I I have to say that the foundation is given by Arrow which is a very strong one. So uh like I I to be honest I did not have such plan in my mind ever. So when I attended the training uh, arranged by Arrow i completed the training and they told me to submit a project which uh, i would like to uh, establish uh, even if the even if someone does not fund me so i was like it was uh, i i i took that very casually and i asked them if i can do something that is not uh, included uh, in the spectrum of srhr and i uh, i asked this because i wanted to do something that uh, that is i am familiar with so Uh, and it was it was instructed as well as part of the project design like uh, i have i had to choose some project that i uh, i previously worked on or i had the basic knowledge to uh, provide or pass on to other people so then i chose i chose football so i designed it and submitted that and when that was accepted that was like a very strong motivation for me so i was very happy like uh, i uh, like i didn't i didn't expect that to happen so when did when that happened that was very motivating and also uh, before during and after the project the uh, aero team especially uh, dash dakshinamurthy dash who was the facilitator of the of the training uh, he provided me and us with the uh, with the all encompassing idea and knowledge about uh, about starting a project or about uh, starting a new venture or initiative so that so i would say like uh, in both in terms of motivation and also in terms of uh, knowledge uh, aero team has supported me a lot 
Amazing. That is really wonderful to know. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Congratulations on the path-breaking work that you're doing. And uh, best you. wishes, uh, you know, as you go forward with this uh, project. Um, so, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, for everyone who's listening in, just to say that uh, this these series of conversations that we're doing with the uh, youth change makers across countries of the Asia Pacific is uh, ahead of the regional youth festival that is happening in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia later this month, hosted by Arrow. Um, and if you would like more information on that, you can always look at the Arrow website and look out for more of these uh, video conversations that we are going to be doing with youth change makers across countries of the Asia Pacific. Thank you so much, Arifan, for joining us this time. Bye-bye. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to attend in this inter interview.